are you in pain? Moderate pain today. So what do you feel? Basically lower back pain. It kind of never really goes away, but it, go, it can be a dull ache. It can be sharp and shooting, but it's pretty much there. So when you w wake up each day, what do you feel? Waking up is the hardest. Really? Yes. To get out of bed takes the most effort. Once I'm standing and I'm up, I'm okay. But if I sit or lay down for any period of time, that takes me a little while to get motivated. So are there days when you wake up and you're just... Yes, there's days I wake up, I have a hard time even getting dressed. Really? Yeah. And you are a... And your job is you're getting dressed to go? Getting dressed to go every morning, be at work by 7.15, and on your feet all day until usually 6.30 at night. As a mechanic, right? No, I'm a service okay. advisor. I was a technician for many years, which I think led to some of my back concerns, but... And tell me a little bit about um, how you first started feeling pain and kind of the path. Probably the in it. my mid-20s, I started feeling substantial pain every day in the lower back when I would go home and I mean, it would be heat and pads. We had an in-ground swimming pool. That seemed to really help a lot. Just mm. walking around in the water alleviated some of the pressure. Um, and basically, I just dealt with it, you know, Advil and Tylenol, and it wasn't until like 10 years ago it started getting a lot worse. And what, do you know what triggered that, or? Uh, just, they call it spinal stenosis. Um, it's basically the spine is just crumbling from abuse and years of, do you know I mean? Physical. Physical, riding motorcycles, go-karts, you know, anything that Boys Enjoying do. Life. Yeah. yeah. Anything boys do. Skiing. So. But. so when you started to feel pain for the first time, did you go to the doctor? Or? I went to, I went the classic route of going to the doctor and then they send you to the chiropractor and that would work for three or four months and then it would just reoccur and then I just pretty much stopped doing anything and did you just give up on the system or give up and think you're going to live a life of chronic pain? Or? Pretty much. Why? Uh, just felt like it wasn't going to go anywhere. No one had any real answers. You know, I never really got a complete workup on the problem. One person would say one thing, one would say another. And then finally, like I said, about 10 years ago, I got, it was real bad. I was out of work for two weeks and... I decided to do something about it and find out what was actually going on. And they did the MRI thing and they said, no more chiropractor for you. Uh, huh. They said, you could walk in, you might not walk out. So so what did they prescribe? Uh, they sent me to a pain management center. Doctor's very good, it's Dr. Dr. Thomas Andruck. He's a really good guy. Mm -hmm. And he's worked with me for 10 years now and he's made me better so at least I can tolerate it. And what's involved in the pain management? Uh, they did a series of injections in my lower back, uh, nerve blockers, they call it, I believe it's pronounced facet injections. And the last thing he did was actually called a rhizotomy where they actually do put needles in your spine and then he kind of electrocutes them and it deadens nerve pain and X was about three years ago and I think that was the best it helped but now I have to be careful if I'm lifting something and I do damage it, it and I might not even know how damaged it is oh. it could be too late yeah but and pills they did subscribe uh, first it was Lyrica and something called tramadol, and now it's oxycodone. How much oxycodone do you take? I can take up to six a day. Today I had none. Today I just had Advil. It, it varies. It varies. And did they talk about um, what's involved in these prescriptions or side effects? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were always, they, they were always worried about, um, you know, the national epidemic there of people being 
hooked on these things. But like I said, there's days I can just say I don't need it and mm -hmm. and bear with it. Were you ever worried about getting addicted? Not really. Not no, really. you knew yourself. Yeah, I'm pretty strong like that. Mm -hmm. which, um, did they talk? To, they did talk to you about addiction. Oh yes, you have to. Being that it's a pain management center, they have to be. They have very strict guidelines. You basically sign a contract with them that you know you are going to make your appointments. They're going to evaluate you. They actually do blood and urine tests on you to make sure that you're taking the medication and not just getting the prescription and selling it, which uh, a lot of people are doing. Oh, fascinating. But, so the pain management, they also, did they offer alternative therapies? Uh, we're still at a holding pattern with where I am. Every time I go, he basically does like the old twister game where you're to see like motion, how much I have and how much I can actually use my body. And we've been at a holding pattern for about three years. And ever since he did that last thing, we just status quo. Oh, great. So, so what you're doing for your pain now is working, you think? I think so. I think the last thing he did, you know, that risotomy worked very well. Um, and just, you know, I haven't, he's thinking maybe swimming you know, this summer, if I can get the range of motion that he wants to see, because he doesn't want to lose any of what we've gained over the 10 years. Okay. And what do you think about the future for your pain? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's options for surgery uh, that we've discussed, but it doesn't really, any of the surgeries are more for stability and for keeping alignment, keeping everything in the line, but there's nothing really out there to reduce the pain. It might reduce some of the inflammation, which inflammation is pain, but no one can guarantee that. So are you just thinking about a life with chronic pain? I am, I am. And how does that feel? Yeah. I'm 50 something years old, so I don't know how much of a run I got to go, so. But, but it must be struggle day by day. Or it is. But you have your good days and you have your bad days. Today is not too bad. You just have to keep on strong, being strong. How has it affected um, your work? Uh, when I couldn't go in for that two weeks, it was because the most demanding part is getting in and out of vehicles every day mm -hmm. as a service rider. And I do like 50 cars a day. That is the toughest part, sliding in and out behind the wheel. And then, of course, we have other things we do, headlights and stuff like that. Even it sounds simple, but to even lean forward over a hood for five minutes can set set pain in motion. And you just grunt, grunt mm -hmm. through it, or yeah, just grip my teeth a little bit. Uh, driving, road testing vehicles is a big thing. If I'm sitting for more than 10-15 minutes in the vehicle on the road test, everyone cringes when they see me get out of a car because I'm kind of crumpled over. It takes me a few minutes to actually straighten up. Oh, wow. Uh, so even sitting, sitting oh, yeah. right now for this long hurts? No, it'll bother me a little bit when I get up. Will but. you tell us when you can't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. No, it's, it's, it's just something I've gotten used to. It's, you adjust your life to it. Like I said, I stand most of the day when I go home to prepare dinner. Um, I'm standing. I don't sit down until I actually dinner's ready and I'm ready to sit down for the evening. Oh, wow. Okay. How about watching TV? I don't watch that much of it, no. so. So, and then you said going to sleep. Is it difficult to sleep? Not really difficult to get to sleep. To stay asleep um, has gotten, obviously, when you get older, it gets harder to sleep, but it's gotten progressively worse. And what, do you use anything to help you fall asleep or just, no? no? Mm -hmm. Do you find that the daily use of medication affects your body, like your tummy or anything, or is, are you just used to it now? No, I don't feel that it really affects that way. I mean, I know probably long term it's not good for liver and stuff like that because it's trying to circulate all that stuff through there, which we have enough going through our bodies as it is. 
and in introducing acts probably not the best thing. And especially if you live a normal life where you go out and have, you know, fun foods and drinks and stuff like mm. that too. Do you ever have to think about the whole picture? Or I'll is... definitely think about if I'm going to go out and have a few drinks, if I've had any pills during the day or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. even though I'm kind of used to them, it's still alcohol can definitely have an effect on, on them. Of course. And it's right on the label. I mean, if you don't read the labels, it's... It's right there, you yeah. know. But most people, it's, it's true. It must You want to live a normal life, but yet, do you think your life is normal because of this pain? Or no, it's... I still do most of what I do. I mean, I don't ride motorcycles anymore or go-karts anymore, but, uh, you know, don't play sports, but I've never, you know, 50 years old, I'm not going to be running around playing football mm -hmm. anyway, so... How about your relationships, friends, and going out and family? How, how has kind of the past 10 years, has it been? Mm, really hasn't changed that much. Well, it's, you seem like a tough. <laughs> I, I kind of kind of do because it's I have to accept it. It's really, you know, unless I go for the operation and it miraculously fixes it or it can go the other way and I hear so many horror stories about people going in for operations and coming out not fixed or you know worse than what they were and you know right now i'm mobile i can get around i don't want to be you know in a wheelchair either do you think um there's people who have helped you there's help out there uh i would say it's probably 50 50. i've sp spoken to people that have had surgeries and suggest it's worked for them and some of my customers I've spoke to and they're still walking around with a cane and, you know, it didn't help them. It, like I mentioned before, it stabilizes you. So you're not going to teeter-totter over, but it still didn't really alleviate any of the pain. Who have you leaned on uh, to help you for advice on how to deal with your pain? Uh, nobody really. Just your own intuition, or I'm a single guy, so it's I just go with the flow. How about doctors or uh, the doctor at Columbia Memorial at the pain management center? He's very good, so he's worked with me. Um, found the prescriptions, you know, the medications that actually worked the best, and what didn't work, and he was very good with that, because we did try a variety of things, and. Uh, some worked, some, it was like taking nothing. And it was like a sugar pill or something. It did absolutely nothing. And what you're on now, which is again, sorry. Uh, the oxycodone. Do you find, do you have withdrawal symptoms? Nope. Do you find? No, nope. never have. How do you know to gauge between one versus four pills a day or more? Uh, by daily activities. If I see myself at 7 30 in the morning barely able to get into a car or you know problems like that then it's time to take some type of medication so you're your own judge on it mm -hmm. um does that sorry uh lasotomy that was the that was the um that was a painful one yeah, yeah. does it stop you from feeling the pain yes it's, it's basically a, it deadens some of the nerves in the spine. You can, sorry, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sorry. it deadens some of the nerves in the spine. And it instantly did it feel better? Uh, it didn't feel better instantly. How did it? It was feel? about two two weeks before I felt any any difference. Uh, it actually hurt more for the first two weeks because how they go in there is it's pretty invasive. And that must have been a frustrating feeling, like you're getting help and it hurt more. But again, the doctor explained, I, w I knew this going into it, that I was going to feel more pain for a while than, than, you know, that it was going to take a little bit, you know, ice packs and stuff like that for like two weeks, all black and blue. It, it was, it was pretty, I was afraid to do it at first, but with his help, I looked online, I read into it. You know, there were some dangers, but 
it, I felt they outweighed, you know, the benefits would outweigh any dangers. You seem um, like you do your research and you really know yourself well. Do you think you've found the right path for your pain management? Uh, I do with the doctor. I don't per se like that place up there. I, I don't mean to say anything wrong about the place, but it's just some of the people in there are, are out to beat the system. You know, they're, they're going to a pain management place. Sure, they can show that I've been here. Okay, I don't have to work now. I have a back problem. You know, my doctor will sign off on me. I don't have to go to work. You know, I just have to come here for my appointments and it, it, it's, that's what I don't like about, that's the only thing I don't like about that place is it's, there's a lot of people out to beat the system and I was brought up to work and provide for yourself and that's what I do. Have you ever considered anything other than um, what you take every day, whether you mentioned swimming or? Oh yeah, um, like ice packs, I used to always be a heat and pad buff, but when I first went to this doctor, he said, no, I stick with ice. And as we were talking before, I, I'm not much for feeling cold, but the ice does work. It numbs it pretty good, but it's only temporary. And it'll still come back. What advice, and I don't want you sitting long, so I'm kind of just I Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. But what advice would you give people in pain? Uh, it can always be worse. Because you do have bad days and you have good days. Um, it can always be, it can get worse. You could be in a wheelchair, you know. I can get up and walk around. Some people can't. That's, I just try to look at the bright side. Sometimes it's hard, but you have to. That's really true. And what do you think the future, if you, five years from now, what do you want to be feeling? What do you think you will be feeling? I would like to say there would be some type of treatment that they come up with in the next few years for my condition. Uh, if not, we may have to, you know, go the surgery route, depending on how, how I stay. If it stays status quo as it is, I'll just stick with it. If it seems to be getting worse, then I'm going to have to do something. And I probably would lean toward the operation. But for now, you just take each day? Day by day. And what's a good day getting out of bed? Jumping out? <laughs> oh, no. I don't think I'll ever be jumping out. But uh, if I could get up and out in 10 minutes and get to the shower within 10 minutes, that would be a good day. That's a good day and a bad day. It'd be a half hour, 45 minutes before I get out of bed. Wow. Trying to stretch and make sure I don't step the wrong way or... But persevere, right? Mm-hmm. Because you lose feelings in other parts of your body from this condition. Mm -hmm. One of my questions is about the pain management clinic, so that, is it the reassuring, like there's some parts of the country that don't have a pain management clinic, and so just how that feels to know at least you have a place that can give you a sort of a comprehensive working on the, on the pain, and hey, I'm like, sure you can just pretend Christina asked that. Like I said, <laughs> I, I really like the doctor, their support staff is very good also, I mean they always call me the next day after any you know, anything I have done, how are you, can we help you in any way? It, they're very supportive and, you know, after 10 years they know me pretty well and they know I'm probably not going to say, that, no, I'm okay, you know, that I don't need anything, but they ask anyways and they're, they're very good like that. So they're a good support system? Yeah, they are. So the pain management, um, you go how many times? Once every three months. Once every three months. Mm -hmm. And they do the follow-up and call. They do a follow-up uh, while I'm there. They have me do, you know, range of motion, ask me how I'm feeling, uh, 
always ask me uh, psychologically how do I feel and stuff like that. They they bring a lot of it into you know how they evaluate me. And do you think you say psychologically? Do you think the mind has a lot to do with how you um, get through your pain? Oh yes, yes. I think a strong mind has a lot to do with it. But um, they also ask you know questions: Are you depressed? And you know. That's part of the yeah, it's part of the pain thing, you know. If it, it can wear on you, if you have you know six or seven real bad days in a row, it, it's like oh man, you know, it's ever going to lessen up a little bit, you know. And then, all, then all of a sudden, you know, it, it can it, either a weather change or something like that, and you're like wow, oh, okay, I can move a little bit better today, and and that's the highlight. How do you get through those tough moments? What do you do? Just grin and bear it. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, think for brighter days. It could be worse. It could be worse. And, you know, there's other people worse off than me, so. That's really true. Wow. But you're, I think, you know, you're getting across the strength and that's what's going to get you through. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, if I came to you, I had the same symptoms. I'm struggling. I've gone through five days of feeling just down in the dumps. It's not getting better. What would you tell me, your advice? Uh, first, I would probably do my own evaluation, look at you, see how you are asking, you know, can, can wiggle your toes and stuff like that and make sure you're not, you know, grave pain. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, I was an EMT for many years, so I kind of, know a little bit about the body. That's why I was able to research some of this stuff. Um, but to keep positive and tell someone how to keep positive, it, it's, that would be very hard to do. Because it, no one wants to hear it coming from someone else, you know. It could be worse. It, it is worse. That's what you're, you know, that's what you're going through. It is bad now, you know. That's a, that's a really good question. I, I don't know how to answer that. Do you feel blessed that you kind of have that strength? No, to, I don't feel no. blessed at all. No. no. Do you feel mad? That's no. Okay? No. It's, it's, it's something I've done over my years of, you know, through sports and it's my own, own demise, I think. So it's, I'm the only one that can do anything about it because I'm the one who I believe caused it, so. So it's just acceptance. It's something I did, so it's something I have to accept. And stay strong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay strong. I look forward to, like I said, him giving me the go-ahead to do the swimming. I was going to say, that yeah. seems like a... a Maybe really a little yeah. physical therapy, but as of right now, I don't have that clearance to do anything mm -hmm. because... It, if I injure it or stress it out more, we lose whatever we gained and I go right back to, you know, being in severe pain again. Was the, so with the rosotomy, um, I'm just curious, does that mean that if you were to hurt yourself, um, I might then not, you, you wouldn't know? I might not feel it as a normal person with you. Oh, I strained my back. Oh, sorry, can you look at it? Oh, okay. I might, I might not feel it as a normal person would because I don't have the nerves have actually been deadened so it it could possibly cause more damage and I wouldn't even know it mm. Mm. that was one of the dangers of the of that procedure but again I felt that was worth doing mm. so you're just really careful about it not as careful as I should be. <laughs> in this profession, i really not as careful as I should be. Because you could be doing something and not something know Something simple. And I could be hurting it and all of a sudden move the wrong way and could have a severe problem. But you don't know it. But, no, or I feel it. You wouldn't feel right. it. Right. Yeah. But if yeah. it goes beyond that point, yeah, I would definitely know it because I would be probably injured. Do you feel sometimes it's like playing, you know, Russian roulette each day, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But 
your choices or you know. that was my choice yeah. I mean I so I used to love bowling that was one of my things I loved to do there's no way I could ever do that now there's no way and if by chance I planted my foot and I was fairly good if I plant my foot the wrong way or something like that it, I could I could do permanent permanent damage so yeah that's sad I, when it you have to let go of a hobby or something and i used to like motorcycles you know, like chris so mm -hmm. that's something i know i can't do it's just and you have to accept that i totally yeah. understand and find alternatives right mm -hmm. yeah. what do you do now for fun? read ah. <laughs> i like to read what type of book uh fiction um a lot of history, history, especially American history, really intrigues me. So, do you have to stand up when you read? No, I can get comfortable in the couch, sit a certain way, but most of the time I'm in bed when I read. So, and do you have any special things in bed, like pillows or anything? Yeah, I have a couple of those. Uh, you see them on the TV there. I know I'm not going to pronounce it, Savakala or something like that pillow with the microbeads in it. I actually placed one of them under my lower back and just regular pillows behind it, and I can read for three hours or so and I'm fine. Oh, good. Do you have while sleeping? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you get up in the night or? Not usually, but I have a remote right on the bed, so I just turn the TV on, watch news until I get tired and go back to sleep. Must be, you must want to get out of bed, but it's a process, right? It's now. a process. I mean, if I, I only want to do it once a day, so I don't want to do it twice. But taking those prescriptions over time, it's got to hurt mm -hmm. your, you know, your liver and stuff like that. Your liver can only, you know, you only get one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can only filter out so much stuff before it starts breaking down. I think I'm also really careful with the medications yeah. mm -hmm. because I had that in the back of my yeah. head, you know, you can only filter out so much. You know. yeah. 